Welcome back, folks, to more Serpent Isle. We just left Gorlab's Swamp here. That's us. We are the Black Cross. Got Monitor down here, Fawn, Moonshade. And what's this gigantic... There's a big castle here. I think that's the White Dragon Castle. We're not going there yet. Uh-oh, it's a killer tree. We just got fucked up. Interesting serpent gate with some rooms surrounding it. Then go ahead and switch back to magic boots for now. Much more protective than swamp boots or fur boots. Check my sextant because there is some stuff I want to check out here. Do a little side trick. I know this place. I never thought to see this again. Avatar, this castle does seem to be for thee. It was once mine home. This was once my kingdom, and once so long ago that mine heart alone remembers within the walls dwelt the first lady who ever lived. Oh, my poor Beatrix. Left alone so very long ago, but such remorse doth do us no good now. She is long since dust. I fear, and our peril now is real. If thou wishest, I can draw thee a map of my home, as once knew it. I do not know what changes were made after I left Avatar, but perhaps this will be help. I seem to recall that there was a secret entrance to the west, but that was long time ago. I doubt that the two great trees near the illusionary mountain entrances are still there. The entrance would be most difficult to find should its landmarks be gone. It is a pity that so much had changed without mine being here. What is attacking us? A fucking rabbit? Shit is a miss. What the fuck, fuck? Getting attacked by forest creatures? This is like a fairy tale gone wrong. And we leveled off of killing a bunny rabbit. Fantastical. It's kind of fucked up. Thought there was a fort around here somewhere. Oh, 
Ah, there it is. How the fuck did I miss that? Wake up, bitches! I don't want that shit. A guard and a witch. That's right, get in the kitchen where you belong. My name is Bella. I am so glad that thou hast met me privately. We cannot speak for long lest Dragon or his minions find us. I live in fear of Dragon and his terrible power. Who is this Dragon? I fear that no one could save me from Dragon, for he is invincible. Invincible? <laughs> we cannot be harmed by blade or knife or any magic that I have seen. Whatever he and his expedition found, it hath given him unimaginable power. Cannot be harmed? I have been thinking about this for some time. Perhaps Dragon can be defeated by something that doth not actually bring harm to him. Thou could treat an arrow with the plant that is called King Savior. Tell me of this plant. According to legend, the plant is found in the deepest and most dangerous parts of the forest. Only one man can help thee. The forest master could guide thee to the king's savior, but beware him, he possesses strange powers. As? I cannot say, for they were, for he was careful to never let me see any of such display, but thou would feel the power if he dost meet him. Take care that thou dost not anger him. Forest master? What kind of gay name is that? His name is Morgrim. His face is horribly scarred, yet I do not fear him the way I fear Dragon. Morgrim is a strange man, foreign in some way I cannot explain, but he is the only one who hath treated me kindly since Carvel was murdered. I stayed with him a short time after I ran away. His dwelling place lies far southwest of here, in a grove of silver leaf trees. Perhaps he shall deign to aid thee. An arrow thusly treated would put anyone stricken by to a deep sleep. Doest thou not see? The arrow would not harm him, but it would allow the herbal medicine to take effect. This would give us the chance to find and steal the source of Dragon's power. Unless we do this, I am doomed to be a slave. Save? But that is before thou didst come here. Thou must save me from this devil Dragon. Why are you afraid like a little bitch? Of the two skull settlers who came to this place led by Dragon, only three of us survive, and the other two work for him. Dragon burned the ship and left the others to die. I know he played a part in the death of my husband as well. Oh, Jesus, more shit to talk about. Tell me of your dead husband. My husband Carvel died when Dragon took a group of men in search of gold. Only Dragon returned. He told a story of how they were attacked by wolves, but he lied. I did not find the truth until a short while ago, when Dragon drunkenly boasted of killing Carvel and the others. That was when I ran away. Ran away? Yes, I could not stay here with the man who murdered my husband. I went deep into the woods, but Dragon lackeys found me and brought me back. Now they watch me closely, but not closely enough. One of the two, one of the settlers, Falcon, wanted to leave the settlement. Many others chose to go as well. I did not believe when Dragon allowed Falcon's group to leave so easily. I discovered why. Dragon had the ship burned, leaving them all to be eaten by the wolves. Surely thou would have heard of them. With every cry they can hear how they hunger for our flesh. A year ago, a group of us left by the ship and came to the Northlands. We were in search of gold and precious gems that all said to fill this land. Our original camp was to the south, but we had no luck. Then we made our way to this place. Once here, Dragon seized control. We had to do his bidding or suffer the consequences. What were those consequences? There were beatings and other things I would rather not talk about. Things like butt sex. And the other two? Beware them. They followed Dragon's orders unquestioningly. They would even kill at his word. Go now. Be safe. Do not forget me. Uh, we're not going to sleep, bud. I do not believe we have met. My name is Dragon. I am lord of all the land that I serve. At present, I am hard at work fulfilling mine appointed destiny. Conversing with thee is nothing but a useless distraction from achieving that end. You're a lord? <laughs> Give me a fucking break. I am the master of the great northern forest, and none can dispute it. 
If thou shouldst ever speak to a disfigured crippled man named Morgrim, I would recommend against that. Pay no mind to what he may say. Morgrim is an evil and a praying man. Thou should avoid him like the plague. This is the one and only piece of friendly advice I shall give thee. I was born a papa's son. My father was a rancid beggar. Man who lived in the dirt of the road. I hated it as I hated him. But there was one thing he always told me. He told me that one day I would be a rich and powerful man. I believe this is my destiny. When I was still a lad, I stole his near-empty coin purse and sought my fortune. I have acquired naught but half of my legacy, though I already have the power. You ain't got no power, bitch. I need not bore thee with the details of how I learned of this power. Suffice it to say, I cannot die. Thou wouldst do well to consider that a warning. Do not think of stealing my gold, for it is thee who shall lose thy life. I cannot die because I am destined to become wealthy. Heard in Avar. Work the mines night and day. Barrel cooks and cleans like a good little wench. They are good workers and they shall make me wealthy. Warning. If we ever come into conflict over the gold that I know lies somewhere in this land, I shall kill thee dead without an ounce of regret. It was one year ago that I led my band of men to this spot. We had all heard the tales of gold and fabulous gems that could be found here. We came by ship, the Emerald Bitch. As we planned to settle here, they all brought their wives and children. For months we suffered through bad luck. Then one of the miners made an important discovery. That was before I went on a hunting expedition. But I, I am ahead of myself. It have been too long since I've had a fresh face to converse with. Damn distraction. Not long after this first significant find, we had planned a great feast as a celebration. I led a group of hunters into the forest to hunt for game. We were attacked by a vicious pack of wolves. Only I survived to make it back to camp. It was then I discovered my power, but the failed expedition was a bad omen. Soon my men were divided and our group fell into rebellion. Simply disobedience, really. Oh, yes, and someone cut Hamlin's throat and stole his gold. I do not know who did. After this, most of the men chose to leave. So, what was I to do? I gave them their fair share of gold we had found and sent them back to the ship with my blessings. They were led by that weakling falcon. After they left, I never saw them again. Oh well. For three months we toiled near the site of our original landing, but we found shit. It made the men so discouraged that they nearly surrendered. At last we moved camp and came here. A man named Falcon declared himself the leader of the group of dissenters, and was compromised, comprised of nearly half of our number. He was a man of exceedingly weak character. He suggested that we return home penniless, without a single piece of treasure. All because of a few little bitches and children had a difficult time of it in the wilderness. Boo-hoo! Well, all that is past, and there is nothing one can do for the dead. We have the treasure. One of the men, a fellow by the name of Hamlin, discovered a nugget of gold as large as my thumb. It was not far from our present location, rest his soul. You're a fucking asshole. I'll beat your shit. I will beat your shit! Alright. Better fucking say before I get stuck on a tree limb. Let's head southwest. Let's see if we can find this. What's attacking me? I don't even see nothing. What the hell is that thing? Who the fuck are you? I am not a spy. I don't really give a shit if you are.
Got some wild boar. Hello, anybody home? I don't think this is where he's at. This must be the boat and the wolves. Day 17. Everyone is overjoyed that we have actually reached the northern marshes, including myself. I look forward to setting camp and finding treasure. Day 22. We were forced to kill a pair of wolves near the encampment. Day 28. The men are upset that no gold have been found. However, I remain confident of our venture. Day 40. Finding more wolves than gold. Day 41. Gold at last. Day 45. Women and children are finding gold nuggets. How exciting. This is fabulous. Day 69. More have been eaten alive. Wolves, more wolves, men behaving like wolves. Worse than wolves, they are after our gold. For them, life is suddenly worthless. How could they value a nugget more than its true worth? Day 108, no one can be trusted. Who will be the next target? Hopefully I will survive and my gold will not be stolen. Day 121, something horrible happened to Hamlin. He was found with his throat slit and of course his gold was missing. This worthless gold that he had, painstakingly gathered, killed him. So this is what it's come to, gold-thirsty and bloodthirsty bastards. Day 127. I have finally found a vein of gold from whence I retrieved a small quantity with my pick. Day 148 to 149. I lay awake on my bedroll all night till dawn. Cannot seem to be able to sleep, too many angry thoughts disturbing my mind. At daybreak I rose in a state of exhaustion. Day 167. More men are fighting amongst themselves. I am so wary. Is this what I wanted? The encampment is split into factions. Now I cease riding and rest by the fire, gathering much needed strength for tomorrow. Day 183. Dragon betrayed us. Who would have thought it? I think bitterly of his treachery. The ship is burnt. We are doomed. The howling is getting closer. Yeah, this dragon, he's a true douchebag. He needs to get skull fucked, for sure. All right, it's a big forest.
There we go. Those are the trees we're looking for. Here we go. This is the place. I am Holgrim, master of these forests. Master? That is correct. I am the forest master, friend, to Windrunner, former protector of Illyrion, and now a refugee of Pagan. Of course, that will mean nothing to a foreigner like thyself. Dost thou know that I can speak to animals and trees? <laughs> Do not smirk, knave. King's savior is what I need. Thou art looking for the plant they call King's savior. It is a green plant with spiked foliage and tiny yellow blossoms. Thou shalt find King's savior growing near mushrooms along the western shore of this land, beyond the mountain ridge. I won't be asking what thou dost want it for. It's none of my business. Tell me of speaking to animals and trees. It is far more interesting to speak to an animal or tree than it is to speak to thee. I can assure thee of that. Much better conversation. Why, it's through this talent that I am able to speak to the Hound of Dorscar, for instance. Unfortunately, I'm having a problem with most of mine other magical powers. Hound of Dorscar? The stories that Hound can tell. I can talk with the Hound of Dorscar for hours. It was a great mystical beast capable of tracking any sort of creature. It can track across worlds and is often ranging on the scent of one unusual thing or another. I confess I am not comfortable with the ways of magic is practiced on this world, as prescribed by the sorcerers of Moonshade. I suppose I am simply not used to it. This world is plagued by such chaos and imbalance. Long ago I grew so frustrated by not understanding the way it worked that I put all of my power into living orb, the heart of Illyrian. Tell me of this heart of Illyrian. With the orb, I am as one with the animals and plants of the forest as I am its master, servant, and devoted protector. The orb is spiritually connected to me, but it hath been stolen. Stolen? Let me guess. Draken, the leader of a mining camp that is elsewhere in the forest camp, trapezing through hair with some of his friends one day. They reached my sanctuary while I was away and stole my orb. I had my hands full with another problem at the time, so I sent Windrunner and his mates after them. The wolves killed all of them, save Dragon himself, but he threatened to destroy the orb if I did not let him go. Since that time, he hath escaped me. Oops, I just killed your wolf. Sorry. Dragon is a bastard, by the way. Now that Dragon possesses the orb, he is nearly as powerful as I, yet I am not as powerful as I once was. Over time, my powers have diminished even more, and I am no longer capable of challenging him for the possession of the orb. He is virtually impervious to all forms of harm. I doubt that which fare better than I have against him, and conflicts have all but killed me. If I were thee, I would try to reason with Dragon. He'll not listen to me, for we are enemies, but thou mightest have a chance. Would thou try to retrieve my orb? Yes. Thou art a true friend, if a strange one, so I shall give thee a word of warning. The wolves and bears, boars of this forest, are very hungry. There was a time, not so long ago, when I could have assured that no harm would come to thee, not only while thou art in my forest, but across the world. But not only hath my magic gone, but as I am certain thou dost know, this world is off kilter. Nothing is certain any more. Good luck to thee. I have another problem. What would be Cassad the Trapper? Perhaps thou hast heard of him. I am told he is a man of some renown in certain circles. He and I have come against each other before. I bear no grudge against any who hunt in my forest for food, nor one who makes their living as a hunter. But his hazard, is he has named, no sense, no love for anything save the kill. He hunts and kilts without seizing with bloody and painful methods. None of the predators grace like the wolves. I cannot abide a man such as he. A group of miners, driven delirious with gold fever, sold everything they owned and came here some time ago. They found nothing and were driven to the brink of starvation. Most of the miners tried to leave, but they were eaten by wolves. They were driven away because dragons' demands of constant work and terrible tragedy. Tell me of the chaos and imbalance. For example, these bizarre storms. Surely thou art familiar with them. We had nothing like this on Pagan. So here you get like the first um, explanation. You, you start to hear of the world of Pagan, which becomes Ultimate Eight, uh, and uh, we'll be LPing that uh, shortly after seven, actually. 
It hath completed and completely interfered with me using my powers. Before the hand of Darskar can track, thou must show it an item belonging to the person whom thou dost wish to seek, not any old item, if it must be something that reflects the soul of one lost, something personal, something of the heart. Then the hound can guide thee to the general vicinity where the sought being doth dwell. Nothing can stop the beast. My thoughts, emotions, perceptions, my soul, it is all tied to the orb. The heart of Illyrian is like unto mine own heart beating in my chest. Having lost the orb, I am as dead man walking. I cannot heal the land. I cannot even summon the hound of Darskar for a decent conversation. Summon the hound? Ever since I have lost contact with the orb, I am so weakened that I have not been able to pronounce a call that the hound is capable of hearing. Even with those long floppy ears on that miserable mongrel, bah! Didst thou require the hound for some reason? Yes. I cannot help thee until mine orb, the heart of Illyrian, is returned. How do you heal the land? And the land does solely need it. Thou hast traveled this forest. The trees are tall but brittle dry. Soon they will all be lifeless and bare. The wolves in the forest are already becoming quite mean, as I am certain thou hast noticed. It is all the wicked result of forces out of balance. Tell me of Windrunner. He is a great grey wolf, and my long-time friend. He is also a refugee like myself. We have been through many adventures together. And this pagan, tell me of it. Ah, pagan, a wondrous world far better than this miserable place. At least it was before destroyed by the evil one and his followers. Evil one? He is the destructor of worlds, the one who calls himself the Guardian. Ha, but why do I speak of this to thee? What would thou like to know of him? <laughs> His followers. The followers of evil, one who are allegiant. They are declared war upon all who did not fall in tribute to their master. I am proud to count myself among the enemies of the evil one, and am proud to have earned his wrath. But his followers and their cowardice set fire to my force. Even the great tree of life Illyrian burned. Using all my powers, I was able to obtain the silver seed from within Illyrian, but in the effort the flames took away my sight. The agony was unbearable, and I would have surely died there in my dead forest on my dead world if it weren't for my true friend, Windrunner. He saved me so that one day I could become the protector of the new force, but I have been blind since that day. Saved you? How? Through his efforts we escaped, and I used the last of my magic to do so. We found ourselves here, on the Serpent Isle. That would be this place, the Great Forest. I have been caretaker of these trees and these lands for several centuries. It seemed that time doth not pass at the same rate here as my world, but I am sad to say that my powers are not what they once were. Now this forest, this entire world, is dying, even as mine old world did. But this world will not die with a scream, but with a whimper. But torn asunder by some terrible devil, but gently fall into the slumber of death as great cosmic forces shift out of alignment. What would thou speak of me, stranger? Illyrian was the magnificent tree of the wife of the world of pagan. How couldst thou not so know such a thing? It stood as a symbol of peace and a dance for more than a millennium. Its branches stretched across the sky. It was last in the long line of noble and dutiful protectors of Illyrian. It was the bearer of the silver seed and the prime target of the evil one and his followers. The silver seed? The Lord Fate has burdened me with a tremendous weight. The silver seed was split open in the destruction and the discord, and its magical powers have seeped from it. The task was mine to plant the silver seed. If I survive the cataclysmic end this land faces, I have failed in the duty now to. <laughs> it's only the tales were true. Split open. Magical as it may be. It is not but a seed, susceptible to the rigors of the world around it. I know not when, but this thin shell of the seed split apart. The contents wherein the magical of the seed did dwell were mashed and beaten unknowingly by my own body whilst I tried to escape. The magic within died. It seems to be the way of this guardian to try to destroy all goodness and life in the world. I spit upon him. Why, if this evil one were here right now, I would tear off his head and feed the rest of him to Windrunner. That is what I would do. I did go to the Zinkin monks for aid in my quest to make the whole seed. They could not heal it, but they told me of a passage in the decrepit book. It was penned by a scribe of a long-dead folk who once peopled this island, and intended that they too possessed a silver seed. Alas, 
The scribe made no mentions of its whereabouts, so it may as well be a myth. Thank you for the information, old man. And thank you for watching another episode of Silver Seed. Or, excuse me, uh, Serpentile. That must be Windrunner down there. He's got a, it's a red-eyed wolf. Pretty fucking cool. Ooh, free potions.